Hi everybody, my name is Sean O'Kane with Chip Estimate TV. We're here at CDN Live 2013. I'm here with Cadence, Samsung, and Arm talking about the 14 nanometer FinFET. Now collaboration is a very key component to achieving first time silicon success at advanced technology nodes. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a deeper look into the technical aspects of this exciting new logic process node. So with me today is Alan Lin, Foundry Interface and PDK Manager at Samsung Semiconductor Incorporated. Raul Delacar, Product Marketing Director at Cadence. <laughs> and Mr. John Heinlein, Vice President Marketing with the Physical IP Division at ARM. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with me today. It's a Thanks pleasure. Right. Nice to you. Alan, um, why is early collaboration at 14 nanometers so critical to silicon success? Uh, well, the foundry, EDA, and the design ecosystem is very important for the design wins and for customer uh, time to market. Mm -hmm. And this early engagement, collaboration with ARM and the Cadence is really to address the new challenges during the process development stage. Uh, Raul? Uh, could you elaborate a little bit more on Cadence's 14 nanometer FinFET from the custom and digital aspect? Sure, Sean. So FinFET, uh, I believe, is a paradigm shift for the whole industry. That's why the entire semiconductor industry is looking at it uh, with great awe and anticipation. Uh, one of the reasons is it's got the best electrical characteristics that we have seen in a long time. Um, the leakage current is, is very low the threshold voltage is very low. What that offers our end users is a best of both worlds in performance and power. Excellent, John, uh, this is the first instance of a full Cortex-A7 14 nanometer FinFET process. Now from an implementation standpoint, can you share more details regarding the significance of the Cortex-A7 test chip? Sure, and I think it's important to remember that you know we've been engaging with Samsung and with support from Cadence for a long time on test chips for new process technologies. But if you look back just a few years, we did a 32 nanometer test chip, but that test chip in this early stage of the process development was a Cortex-M0, a much simpler uh, core. What we've done with this test chip and this collaboration is take a much more advanced A-profile core with our Cortex-A7. This is a full uh, Cortex-A profile chip that you can buying a cell phone today, it has a cache and it has all the capability of an A-profile core, but we put this in a test chip so early and we think that's going to accelerate and de-risk the uh, customers who are using this kind of process. Great. Alan, could you just share a little bit more details regarding the improvements um, on the leakage uh, dynamic power advantages uh, for the 14 nanometer? Yeah, sure. Uh, the 3D FinFET structure brings a lot of challenges to our uh, process development. However, this uh, 3D uh, FinFET structure brings uh, two very important uh, benefits. The first is the wraparound gate to reduce the leakage, and the second is the fully depleted channel. So with these two benefits, we are able to get the performance gain with a lower VDD. And this lower VDD is really the key to reduce the leakage and the dynamic power. Fantastic. Raul, so what do designers need to know uh, about the custom IP and standard cell designs uh, using FinFET? So FinFET, uh, uh, at least three challenges come to my mind uh, for the full custom and uh, standard cell designs. One is uh, for FinFETs, uh, we're using, the industry is using SADP, or self aligned double patterning instead of the traditional LELE, which is the layout edge, layout edge kind of configuration. And that is very restrictive in terms of the grid that get, uh, the fins get localized to. That's something that uh, the standard cell tools and the designers have to get used to. The second is the, the transistor width itself. In the traditional planar transistors, transistor width could be varied uh, almost arbitrarily. But now you have these discrete fins and you can go only in discrete uh, digital kind of steps, right? That's something, uh, that's a new challenge. And the third key challenge is the parasitics itself. Now you have these fins which are up in a third dimension in a Z axis, and that increases the capacitive and resistance effects that adds to the Miller effects and hence uh, the performance. And that's something that uh, the designers need to kind of model. Continuing with the collaboration theme, John, uh, you know, we've heard a lot uh, about the need for this collaborative effort. 
uh, and early optimization at these advanced nodes. Now, what does this mean for, uh, uh, from ARM's perspective? Right. We believe that our design methodology is such that it delivers a very high quality, highly manufacturable result. And so, actually, we believe we're ahead of the curve on anticipating some of these trends. But when you look at an advanced core like an A7, it really forces you to be sure you're looking at the kinds of structures that you need to achieve a high megahertz, high performance, and yet low power design. So it's bringing together the two needs on the process side of making sure it's highly manufacturable mm -hmm. with the specific needs of a particular core that's representative of the kind of high-end applications that we do in these kind of app processors. So this is a perfect chip to explore both of those trade-offs. So our IP, the process technology, and the EDA flow will all be ready at the same time. Yeah, Alan, how, how is Samsung able to significantly reduce the 14 nanometer die size compared to any other? Sure. Uh, Samsung 14 LPE FinFET technology uses a smaller contact party pitch, the CPP, and also we have a smaller SRAM, and also we have the FinFET specific optimized standard cell. So these are the three very key design parameters that we can achieve the smaller die size. So uh, is, is the uh, FinFET, 14 nanometer FinFET uh, process development, is it on track? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, we have the test vehicle started last year, and our MPW, the multi-project wafer, is ready now for the early FinFET adopters like ARM. Yeah, clearly double patterning uh, is a huge challenge for designers at 14 nanometer row, and I know you, Cadence has done a lot of work at the 20 nanometer process. Uh, what is Cadence doing to, uh, uh, to solve this particular issue? So uh, as John pointed out earlier, right, uh, double patterning has been an issue even at 20 nanometer. So we've had the luxury to start warming up, to start working on these double patterning issues at 20 nanometer itself. And uh, the need for double patterning kind of, it extends the flow upstream. So for the first time in a digital flow, for instance, uh, you need to account for your double patterning and rules in the placement step because you can't, you have to place the right kind of colored cells next to each other. From there, we have to extend it down uh, to the optimization, to the routing uh, parts of the flow and the sign off. So uh, we've had the nice, uh, uh, pathway along 20 nanometers to address some of these challenges and extend that at 14 nanometers. So we feel fairly comfortable looking at um, some of the test chips we have done, particularly the A7 was a big learning experience and uh, it was a proof in the pudding of uh, uh, the tool side where they have been able to go look at not only the basic process requirements, but also the ability to extract the best PPA, the power performance and area, as John, point John pointed out, uh, from these uh, complex chips, from the A7, for instance. And continuing, Raul, talk about uh, Cadence's role with taping out the Cortex-A7 test chip at Samsung Fab. There were three key pieces. One is the process itself. Uh, to be able to get early visibility and to model some of the process effects early on along with Samsung. The second was to build in the smartness and the intelligence in the tools uh, that Caden supports, the entire uh, encounter RTL to GDS and even sign off flow from uh, RTL physical to uh, EDI system to downstream uh, sign off tools in ETS and physical verifications. They were enhanced. And the final aspect is when you look at a core like an A7, we are looking at the methodology that goes along with it the scripts that go along with it. So that what you have is an end product that makes adoption for an end customer a lot easier, brings down the barrier of adoption. So I think that's, that's the big gain in this whole exercise. Alan, from a technology standpoint, how does Samsung view the success uh, of the Cortex uh, A7 test chip uh, tape out? Oh, huge. Good. So this is such an important milestone for Samsung Foundry process development to go through this uh, collaboration and have a very successful tape out for the ARM Cortex A7. Mm -hmm. And Samsung 14 LP FinFET technology, low power and also tighter uh, contact party pitch is right on customer's desire. John, why don't you just bring it all together, summarize it, uh, the technical collaboration between ARM, Cadence, Samsung, 
on the A7 test chip? Sure, and I think that uh, the last two answers really highlight the two aspects of it. On the one hand, from a risk reduction perspective, one of the key benefits our customers are looking for is us to reduce the risk of them getting their design to market fast. So by having the tool flow, the physical IP, and the optimized physical IP, and the core and the process all linked together, it highly de-risks the work of the customer need to get their design to market. On the process side, by forcing early on in the life cycle of the process a more advanced processor, the process engineers and the, and the foundry gets to see the kinds of issues we're facing and make sure that that's tuned as well. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today. So for uh, John Heinlein uh, from ARM, Raul, Raul Delcar from Cadence, and Alan Lin from Samsung, thank you very much. My name is Sean O'Kane with Chip Estimate TV.